we really need to diversify the energy from now until 2030 with big steps, no small steps, because the amount of CO2 into the atmosphere keeps increasing continuously. My name is Lourdes Vega. I am a professor of chemical engineering at Halifa University in Abu Dhabi. My name is Jose Cordeiro. I am an engineer from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. My name is Patrick Nowak. I'm executive director of Future Foresight and Imagination at the Dubai Future Foundation. I'm Anders Sandberg, senior research fellow at the Future of Humanity Institute at the University of Oxford. Throughout humanity, we have used different sources of energy. In ancient times, we used the water, the wind, also trees and other primitive forms of energy. But then, with the Industrial Revolution, we moved into coal. Coal was the major source of energy two centuries ago. Oil, petroleum was also discovered, which is very, or it was very important for transportation. All of that economic growth has been predicated on utilizing fossil fuels. That growth has come at, at the expense or has come with a number of externalities. We are looking at uh, global climate change, we're looking at weather patterns that are shifting, we're looking at temperatures that are changing on the globe. So while the first 250 years were about emitting carbon, I think the next hundreds of years are gonna be about new business models that will rely on internalizing the externalities that have been produced. And the other two more important things is saving energy as much as we can, because we waste energy. And the one is increase the energy efficiency of however we produce the energy. We are also seeing new technologies to sequester carbon, which might in some years time lead to the ability to say, remove carbon from the atmosphere, especially since many of these renewable energy sources fluctuate depending on the weather, sometimes you get so much energy that you can't use it in the power grid. So the idea is to use the excess of renewable energy that you will lose because you don't need it. So you use this excess of renewable energy to break the water molecule. You produce hydrogen and then once you need energy because there is no sun, there is no wind, etc., that hydrogen can be used to produce electricity back to the grid. So this is called power to power. But now, once you produce this hydrogen, you can do what is called power to X, which means I use the power to produce my hydrogen, and now my hydrogen can be used to produce power, but also for different applications. For example, heavy transportation, because when you put hydrogen into your car, the only thing you produce is water. Electricity and water. Is hydrogen new? No, no. We have been using hydrogen for many years. We have been using hydrogen for refineries. We have been using hydrogen since we have fertilizers. The ammonia is produced thanks to hydrogen. What is new about hydrogen is that hydrogen allowed us to have a clean source of energy that can be used for transportation, it can produce back power, and for heat and some other applications. I'm fairly optimistic about climate change, not so much because I think politicians are going to make wise decisions all of a sudden, but rather we see technological change that makes renewable energy sources that don't emit carbon, like solar and wind, becoming much, much cheaper. We try to develop technologies for decarbonizing the different industries and also for finding new sources of energy. This is nice because there will be different solutions in which we can move into this energy transition. Also, in the future, we might have wireless energy transmission. In fact, there are also many experiments to use space-based solar power. So this will be like satellites orbiting planet Earth and uh, gathering this solar energy and then beaming it down to Earth. So this is the future, a transition from fossil fuels into renewable energy. Renewable energy is already becoming cheaper in many places, particularly close to the equator. Countries that have a lot of sunshine already have cheaper electricity from sun than from coal or petroleum. We are moving into an energy internet 
that some people call the internet. That will be totally decentralized and then people will be able to produce and to consume locally. We are moving from a world of energy scarcity into a new world of energy abundance, where energy will be not only abundant, but cheap and available to everybody in the planet because everybody has at least some wind and some sunshine.